G'day everyone, my name is Nick and today we are going to look at trying to break the newest plugin that's not in the alpha version of uh, After Effects yet, but well, it's coming soon and they're, they're beta testing it with us, uh, the fellow punters. You can download it here if you want to try it out um, and sort of just muck around with it. It's pretty similar to Roto Brush 1 except for one thing. It actually kind of works pretty well. Now, we've done a lot of tests. I've done a lot of tests. Josh has done a lot of tests on his channel. There are some other people on YouTube who've done a lot of tests, but I'm not interested in seeing successful tests, which it has been up to this point. I want to see if I can break this thing. I want to give it something that I know is difficult to roto. So we're going to look at a couple of shots today. Uh, this first one here, you can kind of see of a girl standing on a windy peak. Um, it's it's very windy. I don't imagine it's going to do very well with the hair. The hair particularly, I don't imagine it's going to have a very hard time with. But we're going to see how we go. Um, I'm not going to say no, it can't do it. But let's have a go and see how we solve this. See if Roto Brush can solve it. So we'll jump in. We'll double click on the footage. And we'll go to the Roto Brush tool up here and click that. Um, now, the brush is very small, so let's make it a little bit bigger. I'm pressing Alt to and, and holding down Alt and making the mouse go up and down to make the brush a little bit wider or smaller. All right, let's start drawing out our roto. So it's a very broad brush, isn't it? Let's try it a bit smaller than that. So far, so good. Um, I should probably put this on best. I always forget to put it on best. It should be on best as the default, in my opinion. <laughs> All right, picking up the hands, all right. Uh, let's see. Yes, good, good. Picking up these strands of hair, well, not bad, not bad. I think I'll have to use, I mean, inevitably, I'm going to have to use a refine, a refine edge tool to get it to work properly. But, you know, it's, it's there. Um, all right, so that's the main clump of hair. Let's maybe just make the brush just a tiny bit smaller. See if we can get the strands. It's going to struggle with the strands, let's just be honest. And a, a, a normal roto artist would have great difficulty trying to separate this out from the background. I don't think actually it is. And it would just be sent back, let's be honest. All right, let's press play and see how we go. Um, obviously it does brilliantly with the limbs, the solid objects. Now here's where it gets a little bit questionable is here in the hair. It's picking up a lot of stuff. The, the solid objects are fine, but where it gets a bit questionable is with the hair and that's to be expected. But, but, I mean, it's not doing a terrible job with the hair. It just doesn't really know what to do with it. I mean, I don't even know how I would define it. But it's, it's finding some very interesting edges. I dare say that it probably looks okay in the roto if it kind of holds okay. Well, actually, that's not true. It might look terrible. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll just wait for this to finish and see how we go. So you can kind of see the hair is throwing it off big time. But it is finding the edges of the hair. So that's kind of interesting. All right, let's have a look. So let's play it back. Um, you know, it's... It's not the worst roto I have seen with hair, particularly. I don't even know how a human would even try and roto that kind of hair successfully. It would be a tough, tough job. Um, I'm going to put the contrast down a little bit just to see how it does. Um, we'll reduce the chatter as well. Um, let's feather it a little bit, make it 20. I will say this, it, it does take a long time to click in. Sometimes the roto brush is a little bit slow. Um, didn't quite get the fingers in between though. That's the only other thing too. I could have specified that. That's why I kind of am interested in wondering if, if there is a function that Adobe could put in where we can actually define the keyframes a little bit later. So start here, for example, and then track backwards to see the uh, frames backwards and track the frames forwards. I don't know if the algorithm works that way, but that will be a nice uh, addition, I reckon. We could probably go in and actually fix that up as well. I don't know how important it is to freeze the frame. Um, I don't always do it, so sometimes I forget. Right guys, so it turns out that pressing freeze is actually pretty important to the process. I actually forgot to press freeze on this final render. 
and it was doing some really weird things like the arm would be disappearing from this render. So I just want to remind you that you should press freeze before you start moving on to the next section. Just before you render at least anyway. Look, that isn't terrible. Her hair looks like it's on fire, which is kind of cool. But anyway, let's have a look at... I Actually, to be honest, the way I would probably fix that is once I have that roto down, I would probably use a channel. Uh, I'd use channels to basically try and get out as much as that blue as possible. It was probably the best thing I could do, but we'll give roto brush the benefit of the doubt. Let's go here and use the refine edge tool. So underneath the roto brush tool is a refine edge tool. Um, we'll just go through and just see if we can refine those edges just a touch um, because hair is not great for roto. Everyone knows this. The first rule of roto is you do not roto hair. Second rule of roto is you do not roto hair. We all know how horrible it is. I try to avoid rotoing hair as much as I can because it's terrible. Can we even get these individual strands? I don't reckon we can, can we? Oh no, that's, that's not, a, so I think it has to actually, it only it happens on the edges. So that's the problem is when you have bits of wispy bits like this, I don't think it's gonna actually get them. So we're gonna have a lot of issues with things in the middle here. Honestly, I don't know how you would even do it without Roto Brush 2. So I can't imagine how you would do it. I don't even know how Roto Brush would even figure that out. It would have to be using channels, in my opinion, to be able to get even close to uh, getting this, some of this stuff out. But uh, I don't know what it's going to do. Yeah, see that? It's not, it's not doing too well. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is going to be terrible. Um, I can already tell you it's going to be terrible. But here's what we, we're, we're here to break this. We're here to see how bad this could be. Um, but for what it is, like, let's be honest here. If it wasn't the hair, this would be, this shot would be fine. But the hair is definitely making it difficult. So, uh, but let's see, maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. Automatically though, you can already see that the edge feathering is definitely giving it a much better, uh, much better roto than what I was previously doing. So at least it's not a hard edge anymore. It does hide a lot of that and feathering it out does make a big difference. Um, effectively, you know, if it wasn't, if, if I wasn't putting it against a solid color, like any solid color, it would actually be a pretty decent roto. Actually, it does look actually pretty all right. Even with that solid color in there. I mean, it's not bad. Like, let's be honest. It actually looks pretty good. Would you say this is broken though? I would totally accept this. I mean, there's a little bit here that needs to be cleaned up uh, with the hands. I'm not going to do it now, but you, I reckon it's it, it'll be fine. I've had a look at this bicycle on Josh's channel, um, but let's look at it again. I just want to see, I just want to show you why this is difficult. And this is a fairly complex subject is the fact that there are multiple moving parts here, plus the gaps in the spokes, uh, in the, in the frame is difficult. And I, I, I honestly don't think this is an easy track by any means, even in, like a manual track would be difficult, uh, on this, but. We'll push it. We'll see how far we can get. I actually didn't think the track that I did on Josh's channel was particularly good. Um, but it's still, that was a pretty quick pass because I just wanted to see how far I could push it. Um, but I'll do it one more time because this this is a tricky shot if you had to do it manually because this is something that I would spend possibly half a day to almost a full day having to get correct. Like you would be drawing lots of different parts of this to try and get this to work. And I don't, I dare say that this is something that would take a long, uh, even an experienced guy, a long time to do. So you, you know, this is why I find it f f like interesting that this is able to figure out so much without doing very much. Um, but I'm going to try really hard to see if I can get these details to come through. Um, so we're going to really aim because I think in Josh's version, I didn't quite get the gaps in between. Um, I actually missed a whole bunch of them because I just wanted to see if it could get the general shape and it actually did get a lot of it. So, um, but in this case, I want to see if I can get a little bit more accurate than what I had. All right, here we go.
Um, let's see. Get this little gap here. We need to get this gap here. So far, so good. I'm probably not going to bother with the individual spokes. I think that is... I can't imagine it would pick those up very well. Oops, I went too far. Hey, come back. Come back. Here you go. You see there's a couple of issues here where I'm selecting things and then deselecting things and it doesn't quite know what shape I'm going for. So it can be a little bit confused um, as to what I'm going for, but it seems to at least not be doing the same shape over and over again. But it does subtract randomly, um, which is a bit annoying. But I'm not going to cry about it. Just saying, it's a bit annoying. All right, here we go. I think that looks pretty good. I wonder if we can get these reflectors in too. I'm really trying hard to get as many details as I can. I don't reckon it's going to pick it up that well. But we're going to try and get those details to come in. Because, um, I mean, you know, why not? All right, that's looking pretty good. Oh, we missed a bit of the seat here. Let's put this to best again. Let's track forward and have a look. Alright. Uh, okay, track forward. This is where I get a bit miffed about. Sometimes it just doesn't find those edges very well. I have noticed that with a couple of tracks that I've done. I mean, it's not terrible, but it doesn't always... It's not clinging onto the object All right. as much as I'd like. Let's just press space and then see how we go. So you already see here, there's a few fluid gaps here that are not great, but that is okay. So the gaps in the, in the spokes were, I knew were always going to be an issue. That was going to be an issue one way or the other. So, um, I'm going to see if I can take them out manually. I mean, you know, set manual frames for them. Let's go forward again. So that gap appears and disappears. There's still the gaps in the holes there. Gaps in the holes, what are you talking about? But tracking on the actual kit itself is pretty good. Um, it didn't keep the reflector, which is a bit annoying. So it's definitely an edge detection thing is my guess. This algorithm is based on edge detection, which is obvious, but I think the more contrast it is, the better a job it does. So if you can keep images with high contrast between edges, um, I think you'll be in a good space. Um, that's just something to know. I guess it's good to know what you can and can't get away with in post. Should you decide that you are making a choice in, you know, on set, whether you want to rotor behind something or not. Um, oh, look at that. The pedal just came undone as well. So when did that come undone? All right, so we want to get back here. So right here, I noticed that the rotor wasn't actually hugging onto the pedal very well. So I do a couple more passes, but for some reason it just won't do it. I have to go through frame by frame to actually get it to work, which is a real pain in the butt. So um, I don't know if that's a bug thing or why the image wasn't being recognized because it looks like a fairly solid object to track onto, but just wasn't picking it up. So I'm just going to speed this up just so you get to the end. All right, let's go back in. Let's have a look. So I missed any areas. Yeah, I missed a little bit of the, the bike here. <laughs> let's have a look. Uh, let's draw this back in. Yeah. There we go. Hey guys, just a reminder to just click freeze before you move on to the next section. Again, I completely forgot to do it and it did kind of mess up my render in the end. So click that freeze button. And if you want to make any changes, just click freeze again to unfreeze it, make your changes and then click freeze again. It's that simple. So that's, that's kind of, that's what I'm saying. Like some of this stuff seems to correct itself 
if you give it enough input. And sometimes like on the on the but then sometimes like on the feet it just didn't correct itself. Look, the the pedal disappeared again. Super weird, right? I don't get it either. Um but for this, man, it's I haven't even actually adjusted anything. It's still it looks pretty damn good. Um even just looking at the motion, it's it's still pretty it's a pretty decent track. Um that roto is pretty impressive. For such a difficult roto, this is not bad. Um there are some issues Obviously, I can't get the details in the spokes. I don't think I'm going to have any chance of getting the handle handle brake bar. Yeah, there's no way it's going to do the the thing that goes up here. What do you call it? The handle brake. Um, the brake. <laughs> I mean, duh, the brake. All right, guys, here's the final result. As you can see, it doesn't look too bad. There's a few janky areas with the helmet. Um, but overall, it's pretty good. I actually could probably just go back and just get keyframe those elements out of the helmet and I don't reckon there'll be an issue but I'm not going to do that in this tutorial obviously um, the future of this plugin is pretty bright I mean if it can do if it's just going to get better from here I'm all on board for this uh, plugin so guys try to get to it try testing it out it's really great it's just going to make our job so much easier it's just going to make our job so much more creative and the tool's just going to help get things out of the way so we can just do more stuff Anyway, guys, thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.